between now and 2010, there's going to be 10 more shuttle missions, not counting this one or flying right now, okay? 10 more after Endeavour dedicated the station construction. We've got a little bit more to go. <coughs> Plus, there's going to be one more, one final Hubble servicing mission. We're going to service the Hubble Space Telescope one last time. Yeah. That mission is actually set for a little later this year. Once we've serviced Hubble again and wrapped up construction on the International Space Station, we are going to retire the shuttle program and move on to the next generation of manned spacecraft. And this is what it's going to look like. America's next generation of spacecraft for a new generation of explorers has been named Orion after one of the brightest, most familiar, and easily identifiable constellations in the night sky. Orion is NASA's next spacecraft, the vehicle that will replace the space shuttle. Making its first flight early in the next decade, Orion is part of the Constellation Program, which is a component of NASA's vision for space exploration. The vision is a bold plan to extend humanity's presence across the solar system. Orion's development is taking place in parallel with missions to complete the International Space Station using the space shuttle before the shuttle program comes to an end in 2010. Orion's design will borrow its shape from the Apollo spacecrafts of the 1960s and 1970s. The reasons for using the basic Apollo configuration are pretty obvious when you stop and think about it. Not only has this design proven itself, but NASA will be able to mine the wealth of testing data that was used to design Apollo as well. Plus, a blunt body capsule is the safest, most affordable, and fastest approach. Now, this next generation spacecraft will be reminiscent of Apollo only in appearance. Despite many outward similarities, the differences between Apollo and Orion will be vast and numerous. Orion will be shaped like Apollo, but will be about three times larger. Also, advancements in technology and engineering have allowed our spacecrafts and launch vehicles to evolve. Orion will have the advantage of more than four decades of advancements in the aerospace industry. Orion will also have the benefit of all the material, computing, and software advances that have been made since Apollo. It's basically a veteran shape of state-of-the-art technology. And while it is sad to think that Orion will signal the end of the space shuttle program, at the same time, it's pretty exciting to realize that we are moving on to the next chapter in the manned space exploration program. Contract to build Orion was awarded to Lockheed Martin on August 31, 2006. Design, development, testing, and evaluation of the new spacecraft are estimated to occur through September 2013. And here is how Orion will be launched into space. Now, just for comparison, on the left side of the screen, we have a Saturn V and a space shuttle. Saturn V is on the far left. We flew Saturn Vs in the late 60s, early 70s. To the right of the Saturn V, we have a space shuttle. We've been flying shuttles since 1981. And to the right of the shuttle, this tall, skinny rocket, that's the Ares-1 crew launch vehicle. The Ares-1 crew launch vehicle is the rocket that will actually carry Orion into space. This transportation system will build on powerful, reliable propulsion elements and flight-proven technology from the Space Shuttle program. And nearly half a century of NASA's spaceflight experience and technological advances. Ares-1 is an inline two-stage rocket configuration. The launch vehicle's first stage is a single, reusable, solid rocket booster derived from the Space Shuttle program's reusable twin solid rocket boosters that burn a specially formulated and shaped solid propellant. The second to our upper stage will be a modified space shuttle external tank with a single liquid propelled engine mounted on the bottom. Spacecraft Orion will be placed at the top of the Ares-1 rocket along with a launch escape system, just like Apollo had. Now to the right of the Ares-1 we have a bigger rocket, one that's almost as tall as the Saturn V. <coughs> that is the Ares-5. The Ares-5 will be a heavy lift launch vehicle also based on shuttle-arrived hardware. As you can see, a pair of solid rocket boosters and a modified space shuttle external tank with a series of engines mounted on the bottom. This vehicle will be able to place approximately 300,000 pounds of payload into low Earth orbit. Ares-5 will be used to support lunar missions. It will loft 100,000 pounds or more of payload to the moon. 
And its second stage will also function as the Earth departure stage for sending astronaut crews out of Earth orbit. And as you can see here, Orion will be capable of transporting up to six crew members to and from the International Space Station. NASA's current strategy supports Orion missions to the International Space Station no later than 2015, but the goal is as close to 2010 as possible. But more importantly, Orion will provide a means of transporting four astronauts <coughs> to the moon for lunar missions. We plan on returning to the moon using Orion. If all goes according to plan, astronauts should return to the moon no later than 2020. And this time, when we go to the moon, we plan on staying. The goal is to establish a permanent human presence on the lunar surface, just like we've established a permanent human presence in Earth orbit on the International Space Station. And eventually, Orion will support crew transfers for missions to Mars, manned missions to Mars using Orion. That's the vision, moon, Mars, and beyond in the future. Currently, NASA is working toward the first test flight of the Ares-1 crew launch vehicle. This test is currently planned for April 2009 here at the Kennedy Space Center, Launch Complex 39, Pad B. So that first test flight is right around the corner. It's really not that far away, about a year. And it will be an unmanned test flight, of course. It will be unmanned. And just like this was all modified after Apollo for shuttle, it's being modified for Constellation. We're still going to be using the vehicle assembly building, the launch control center, the same two pads. It's all going to be modified for the Constellation program, just like it was after Apollo. From tens of thousands of miles away, the Earth appears as a small, beautiful planet colored in blues, greens, and whites, rotating against the starry blackness of space.